There's nothing more rewarding than a cruise. Great food, fun activities, exotic locations, and most importantly, a chance to experience a part of the world that most of us take for granted. If you suffer from incontinence, whether it's mild bladder leakage or severe bowel incontinence, you may think that cruises are off limits to you, but don't strand yourself on dry land yet. Cruise lines are already set up to accommodate a wide range of disabilities, handicaps, and medical conditions. Ticket prices can range from a few hundred dollars to several thousand, and that's not including the cost of excursions as well as onboard purchases like restaurants, souvenir shops, and gambling. So it makes no financial sense for a cruise line to lock out any one group of people, especially if they're more than capable of accommodating you. Let's do a little role play. Hello, thank you for calling Made Up Cruise Lines. How can I help you today? Hi, yes, um, I want to book a cruise, but I have an embarrassing medical condition. Okay. Well, you see, I suffer from severe bowel leakage, and while I can take care of it with the products that I bring with me, my friends told me that they wouldn't let me on the boat if I was incontinent. Well, I can assure you that is not going to be a problem. We can provide you with extra bags for safely and discreetly disposing of your incontinence products, and I can also put in a note to your room steward to take extra care with your bedding. Oh, that would be super helpful. Not a problem, sir. I look forward to you sailing with us. Now that wasn't so hard, was it? The next big challenge is gonna be figuring out what to bring for supplies. I would recommend against using diapers like Rears, Tykables, or ABU, just because even though these are highly absorbent products, they have been known to get confiscated by security during checks. These are Tina brand adult diapers. The large comes in a package of 14. This is how much space just one package of adult diapers takes up in luggage this size. Depending on your needs, this might not be enough to cover even a three-day cruise. Three days, five days, ten days or longer, and you may have to consider getting a larger piece of luggage or having a separate piece of luggage entirely for all of your incontinence needs. Another thing you want to factor into your plans is how you're planning to get to the cruise. Are you taking a plane to the port or are you driving? If you're driving, bringing extra luggage might not be an issue. If you're flying, you may have to pay to check an extra bag. I would recommend having a bag just for your incontinence supplies. That way you have exactly what you need and you have it all in one space. And while every ship has a medical office, they're probably only gonna have basic supplies like pull-ups and pads. Also, each visit to the medical office is gonna add a surcharge to your trip, so it actually saves you money to bring your own supplies. For longer trips, it might be useful to find out if your ship has self-service laundry stations. Now it should go without saying that a huge part of enjoying a cruise is being a responsible passenger, disposing of your products in a healthy, environmentally sound way, and also being aware that certain activities may not be right for you depending on the severity of your incontinence. But that's okay because there are still plenty of things to do both on and off the ship. Once again, incontinence should not keep you stranded on dry land.